615 on your Thursday morning. May is National Mental Health Awareness Month. And one of the most common and deadliest categories of mental illness that you might not think about, eating disorders. According to the Eating Disorders Coalition, someone dies as a direct result of an eating disorder every 62 minutes in America. The pandemic has only made that worse. Let's get to Ray Daniels live now with a look at how people can get help if they need it. Something a lot of people may need, Ray. That's right, Lindsay and Taylor. According to a report from the National Eating Disorders Association, messages to their phone and online helplines jumped 41% in January of this year compared to January of last year. Here at home, Bellator Recovery in Lenexa has also seen a huge spike in the number of people seeking treatment. One of my clients said the only thing that's consistent right now is inconsistency. Kristen O'Klaus is one of the co-founders of Bellator. She says the inconsistency of the last year has been one of the biggest con contributors to the rise in eating disorders. For some people, the stress of constantly changing routines and increased isolation may have pushed people toward an eating disorder as a coping mechanism. For others, the disorder may have already been there, but it wasn't as noticeable because of busy schedules. But when the pandemic hit, with more people working and learning from home, there was suddenly a lack of accountability from peers over how to act around food or act exercise and teenagers specifically O'Klaus says she noticed they were largely influenced by social media videos promoting how to lose quote quarantine weight. One of the other Bellator co-founders Brooke Wesley says in order to fight the disorder you have to take a step back from the outside influences and find what grounds you. So much of the eating disorder is taking us outward. How do I look? What am I eating? Where am I going? What do I have to avoid so nobody knows? So that's outward. If we can go inward and go, what what connects me to, to my soul? Do I need to be reading something? Do I need to be listening to music? Do I need to be connecting with meditation? Because ultimately that is what's going to help us truly heal, is first addressing the behaviors, but secondly, kind of connecting with with who we are as a human. Wesley and O'Klaus say even though it might be hard, reaching out for help is the most important thing you can do for yourself. On the screen are some numbers you can call, including Bellator's number and the National Eating Disorder Helpline, as well as the Crisis Text Line. We'll also post these resources on our website at kshb.com and also our app. Ray, what are some signs that someone, if they're hearing this, going, I think I might need some help? Mm. Uh, what are signs to be looking for? Yeah, so those signs, Lindsay, of an eating disorder can vary a lot from person to person. But generally, if someone spends the majority of their day thinking about food or exercise, that's a sign that they may need help. Some other signs include restricting certain foods, being uncomfortable eating around others, and withdrawal from usual friends and activities. It is important to know not all eating disorders center around someone being unhappy with their appearance. Sometimes it's a way for them to find a sense of control in their life. If you have any concerns about yourself or a loved one, you should contact a professional for guidance on treatment.